Hello, everyone. Welcome to UC Berkeley. We're so excited to have you here today for our engineering visit uh, for our admitted and waitlisted students. So let's get started. First, we just want to congratulate our new admits. Like, you did it. You got it. We're so, so lucky to have you. Like, honestly, I want to give you a round of applause just real fast because y'all deserve it. Round of applause, awesome. So um, I'm your moderator today. My name is Kaylin. I use she, her, and hers pronouns. I'm from the town of Ojai, California, although I'm currently coming to you live from San Diego. I am a third year and I am studying geography at UC Berkeley. A little bit about my involvement at Cal while, I was there, while I'm there. Um, I've been involved in a lot of different things, kind of meandering my way throughout um, my entire student life there, but I have been most heavily involved in the Queer Alliance Resource Center or CURE for short. I've done a lot of different things in student government, community service. I'm also doing sales for this really cool company. It's called Fratty Bear. It's a student-led uh, uh, fraternity apparel company. It's really, really cool. Um, and I also do a lot of stuff for Cal parents and families. I'm their intern, so I help out with any events that we're throwing through them. Uh, without further ado, it is, or actually first, I want to go over just a little bit of housekeeping today. Uh, so this is a 45 minute presentation. Thanks for sharing our, your time with us today. Type all of your questions in the Q&A. We'll do our best to answer them. We have a panel of backend ambassadors ready and excited to answer any questions you might have. There will be polls popping up. Please make sure to answer those. That just helps give us a better idea of who we're working with and maybe we can cater the tour a little bit more towards you. This will be recorded, but we do have different versions available on our websites or more general uh, virtual engineering visits. If you ever care to look at any of those, if there's anything you missed. Uh, this is the engineering overview. This is very much so a different material than our regular virtual visit. So if you're ready for engineering, this is the place for you. Like we'll go in depth to anything that you have questions about. This is a student perspective. Um, we are not admissions, we're not financial aid. So there will be no information about that. However, if you do have any questions about that, we can direct you to the correct resources. Lastly, we will end with a Q&A. We'll do our best to answer all of your questions live or typing, but you'll get to hear some amazing, amazing um, questions being answered by our two wonderful guides. Now I'll take it away to our wonderful ambassadors whose names actually rhyme. So take it away, Christina and Nina. Thank you, Kaylin. So, oh, hello, I'm Nina. Um, I use a she, her, his pronouns. I'm originally from Ghent, Belgium, but I'm joining you here live from Berkeley. I'm a sophomore studying business and statistics with a probable, very likely minor in industrial engineering and operations research. Um, I'm also, while being a campus ambassador, I'm also part of Voyager Consulting, which is a student-run consulting group on campus, where in the past I've been able to consult for Costco, and this semester I'm uh, consulting for a beauty company that you guys will all be familiar with. I'm also part of the Women in Network here at Berkeley, where I get mentorship from people who are working in industries that I really want to go into. I'm also currently doing an internship with Maho Chocolates, working more on their marketing as well as their design strategies, and I'm also part of Grief Life. I'll now pass it off to Christina to introduce herself. Yeah, thanks, Nina. So my name's Christina. I also use the she, her, hers pronoun series. I'm from Whittier, California, so um, a California native. I am a third year student here at UC Berkeley, um, and I am an industrial engineering and operations research major. So I'm sure Nina and myself can talk a lot about that major. But overall, I have a good sense of all the majors in the college. I'm part of the UC Rally Committee, which is one of our largest spirit groups on campus, and part of Hispanics and Engineering and Science and Society of Women Engineering two clubs um, kind of geared towards the College of Engineering, and then Haas Bay, which is a group that tries to get high school students interested and start thinking about um, pursuing business um, when they go into college and university. So yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Yeah, thank you, Christina. So now I just want to give everybody a big welcome to Berkeley virtually, I guess. Um, I just want to highlight some of the things that we see here on the slide. So first off, uh, we see our Memorial Glade, which is kind of a grassy area in the middle of campus. I remember loving, or I still do, I, I go there to study sometimes on a very nice and sunny day. You'll see so many students just hanging out with friends. Sometimes they'll be playing like volleyball or they'll be playing just anything basically on the Glade. It's a very much a social hub on campus. In the middle, you'll see our beautiful Campanile. Uh, I remember when I was a lost little freshman and I just didn't know where I was on campus, I would look around and try to find the Campanile and then just walk towards it because I knew that once I was at the Campanile, I was no longer lost. And from there, I could find my way back to my dorm or something. So 
Camp Neely always there to save me. And then finally, I just want to touch upon our 150 years of women celebration. So we recently celebrated 150 years of women being accepted to Berkeley and including 150 years of women being accepted into Berkeley engineering. And so I highly recommend that you go check out 150w.berkeley.edu to read some stories from remarkable women who um, attended our institution. And as well, during Cal Week, we probably will be having a special tour as well for 150 women, years of women being accepted to Berkeley. So highly recommend going to that as well. Yeah, so we're going to go over a few things today. Obviously, you guys are all admitted into UC Berkeley, so you're probably super curious about what the school is like, what school is like, what the College of Engineering is like, and just like the overall like kind of culture of it. So we're going to briefly go over an overview of Berkeley. Then we're going to focus on academics and actually go over each of the majors you may have been admitted to through the College of Engineering. Um, then we're going to go over specific college information, um, student life and resources, and then a lot of the stuff that we do outside of the classroom, the labs, the maker spaces, the research, and the legacy that a lot of alumni and professors have left on the college. Yeah, so let's get right on with a little overview of our history and our establishment. So we were founded in 1868, which means that actually only two years after we were founded, we were accepting women into Berkeley. We go by Berkeley, Cal, University of California, and we specifically are allowed to go by University of California and Cal because we were the first of nine UC undergraduate uh, colleges to be founded here. So that's pretty awesome. Our mascot is the golden bear and uh, our mascot is also then called Oski. You'll see him throughout this tour and we'll definitely be pointing him out. He's kind of the symbol of spirit here on campus and just always makes me happy and smile when I see him. When it comes to campus size, we're about 31,000 undergraduates of which 3,800 are engineers. Uh, we have about 11,500 graduate students of which 2,000 are engineers. These do look like really big numbers, but I just I do want to say that you will never see 31,000 undergraduates at once on campus like that is I don't think I've ever felt like is this was like a big campus I think at once maybe you'll see a thousand or 500 like students as you're walking from one class to another. So I definitely do think that these numbers look big, but I've never felt like I've been kind of in this whole big jungle of people. Yeah, and going over kind of that overview of the university as a whole, um, of course, we're going to focus on the College of Engineering, but um, we know that some of you might not just be admitted into UC Berkeley and might just be checking out the College of Engineering. So I wanted to quickly go over the five undergraduate colleges that we have in case any of them interest you like Nina, she's part of two or potentially in the future going to be part of two colleges. So she can be an LNS and she can be in the College of Engineering. So it's good to know what your options are. So first we're going to focus on the College of Engineering and it's 11 majors. We're going to talk a little bit about the College of Chemistry. The College of Chemistry has three majors that we'll talk about, but we'll specifically focus on chemical engineering. Um, it's the only type of engineering that's not specifically in the College of Engineering. So some of you might be admitted chemical engineering students um, and you'll be taking a lot of those common you know, intro into engineering classes and you'll really get to like get the experience of being in the College of Engineering while being in um, the College of Chemistry and kind of having a balance between the two. Um, then there's our College of Letters and Science, which Nina's in. It's our largest college overall, has over 80 majors and really you can do everything and anything in that college. You can do STEM, you can focus on humanities, you can focus like on, you know, environmental subjects. It's really a large breadth of courses and majors that you can take within the college. Then we have our Rouser College of Natural Resources, which focus on a lot more of the environmental specific majors. And then our College of Environmental Design, which focuses on architecture, landscape, and city and regional planning. Thank you, Christina. Um, now dive in a little bit more about what is the Berkeley culture like and what is it like kind of being ingrained in that College of Engineering and UC Berkeley culture. So I think that one thing that Berkeley is very known for is we're often referred to as a campus of change makers. And this mainly kind of comes from our involvement in the free speech movement, which was a pivotal moment in UC Berkeley history, where uh, actually prior to the 1960s, a lot of students were not allowed to set up tables for any political advocacy or even engage in any political activities on campus. Um, however, after a group of students led by Mario Savio led a series of rallies and sit-ins, the university finally announced that there would be free speech on campus. And this is still nowadays this legacy has remained. You will see so many student groups advocating and flying on Sproul Plaza, which is kind of this long strip of 
kind of just a lot of people will just set up tables there. It's kind of in the uh, south entrance of campus and everybody kind of has to go through there to go to class. Um, and you'll really see these students being real change makers and pioneers in their fields. And we really at Berkeley, I think, push the boundaries to strive both for excellence academically and socially. And we always live by the motto to challenge the status quo. And whether that be through our entrepreneurial spirit, you know, we are home to one of the best business schools in the world, or through our cutting edge research that you will see in so many different labs on campus and so many different professors that want you to be involved in their research. I am personally so proud to be a Golden Bear and being part of this super spirited and dedicated community who is always committed, committed to you know, bettering society, addressing public issues, and always also serving the communities around us. And I think that that is something that I personally love about Berkeley and just that whole Berkeley culture. And so I just also want to leave you guys with the motto of the College of Engineering, which is to transfer the lives, transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. I think that this really truly embodies what it's like to be an engineer at Berkeley and just being in that pioneering and innovative environment. Yeah, I can say myself, I'm very proud to be in the College of Engineering because, yeah, they have, you know, one of the best kind of, you know, engineering schools in the nation. And that's great in terms of academics, but they also focus on ethics. They also just focus on like on the human aspect of engineering, which a lot of other colleges don't. So I really appreci appreciate going to Berkeley for that reason and just the culture around all of the majors here. Um, so really quickly, I wanted to go over the 11 majors and how like how big of a chunk they take within the college. So as you can see, um, EECS is our most popular major overall. I'm sure that a lot of you were admitted, admitted as EECS students. It takes up a little bit more than 40% of our student population within the college. That's followed from, by mechanical engineering, bioengineering, and civil engineering. So those are the most popular majors we have overall, but we also have a lot of really like small and niche majors with, within the college. So for example, I came in as an undeclared engineering student, which is one of the least popular majors because it's a pathway in case you don't necessarily know what you want to do, but want to come to Berkeley and study engineering overall. So I came in that pathway and then I ended up declaring as industrial engineering and op industrial engineering and operations research, which is only about 5% of the college. So even if it's something super like niche, um, such as like material science or engineering science or physics science, you're able to study it at Berkeley and all of our programs are ranked top nine globally. So whatever program you choose, like you're going to get the best education out there. Um, one thing a lot of you may have gotten into major and are super excited and you're like, this is a pathway for me, but maybe once you start at Berkeley, you kind of change your mind about what you want to do. Um, transferring into the College of Engineering is really difficult, but once you're in the college, it's not super difficult to transfer between majors that are pre pretty similar to the one you started out with. So I know friends that have started out in bioengineering and transferred to EECS. I know people who've been in EECS and transferred to bioengineering, people in civil engineering and mechanical engineering switching between those departments. Um, so it is competitive to switch between majors and it's probably the easiest to stay with your major, but obviously if you don't love it, there's an opportunity to um, change that once you come here. After graduating, most of our students go into industry. Um, we're in the Silicon, Silicon Valley, so that brings a lot of opportunities for students to do internships while they're students here, and a lot of time continue with those companies um, and continue like doing that. Um, other students, though, do go to grad school. We have um, grad a graduate program here at UC Berkeley. So a lot of students will do a fifth year at UC Berkeley to get their master's here, or other students will go and pursue, you know, grad school at another university. Um, so there's, you know, master's, PhD, doc and doctorate of engineering, depending um, if you want to go into like academia, or if you simply want to do it because you just want to like better your understanding of the subject matter. Um, and then there's also a portion of our students that go into research, especially for our students in the bioengineering um, department. I know a lot of them that um, are gonna go into research after graduating. So it's really cool how, regardless of what major you choose, like after you graduate from Berkeley, there's gonna be a lot of different pathways you can take and you're able to make that choice. Yeah, I agree. Um, so now I'll just be covering a few more of our majors and we'll be going more in depth about what each major means. Um, so again, uh, Christina talked a little bit about the undeclared major, but I'll just be giving you guys a little bit more information about what exactly does it mean to be an undeclared engineer um, in the College of Engineering. And so 
basically this major is for students as Christina mentioned that just aren't really sure about what engineering they want to do they they know that they want to do some type of engineering but you know it's okay to not know what you want to do I think that college is the place for you to figure out exactly what type of engineering or what subject you want to be studying and so Cal understands that you know you are in that situation and so there is this option and usually as an undeclared major uh, you will have to declare by your first semester um, and in your first semester or second semester you typically have to take a course that allow you to explore all of the engineering fields which honestly sounds like a really cool class to me just to take in general um, however as Christina mentioned this is a quite competitive major but I think that you know if you truly are undeclared this is the perfect way for you to explore what the College of Engineering has to offer. The next major is nuclear engineering. Engineering. So if you're a nuclear engineer, well, you will probably be doing a lot of research and development into processes using nuclear engineering and radiation to kind of look at how those can be used for electricity, powering spacecrafts, and also just look into a lot of how we can use radiation for advances in medicine. So this is kind of the perfect major if, or like this major really does also look at things that are challenging us today. So they'll do a lot of research into how can we reduce greenhouse gas emissions or how can we develop new medical imaging technologies um, and even look at better ways on how we can diagnose and combat chronic diseases. So this is an awesome major that really encompasses a lot of different areas in my opinion. And then we also have bioengineering. So this is a very much a research and development driven major that kind of looks at the intersection between technology and pharmaceutical development. So this major truly has so many possibilities as Christina also mentioned for afterwards, you can go into academia, you can go into research. I know that my current roommate is a bioengineering major and she absolutely loves it. You can do so many different things with it. And I think that at Berkeley, there's also so many cutting edge professors who have worked in these labs. So one that is very famous is Jennifer Doudna. She is doing some amazing things with the genome editing and genetics. And um, there's also just so many other things that you'll be doing with this major. So you can look at medical devices and how and like tissue engineering. And I think that the major really does offer students that really unique perspective into kind of the world of medicine and engineering as well. So really exciting stuff happening in the call in the bioengineering major as well. Yeah, I think overall, like one of the majors that I'm not in, but I've taken a couple classes in and just is super interested is bioengineering. It's just like that major is just like super cool. And it's just like, even if you're not in the major, that's another really cool thing about being at Berkeley that you're kind of able to like take classes outside of your specific major and just find out what you like. So I've been able to take classes within other engineering majors, within other colleges at the university. So you aren't kind of limited to like what your major is. Um, but yeah, I'll quickly talk about industrial engineering and operations research, which is my major. I hope there's at least a couple of you out there that were admitted um, through the IOR department because it's super cool. It's a really small, I'd say small, but kind of large, um, growing fast um, community on campus. This major focuses on complex systems operation, making processes more um, effective, efficient, and safe. And overall, if you're a person that likes math, if you're a person that likes making things just like more effective and more efficient, like for example, for Nina, it, I didn't even know she was looking into IOR as a minor, but it makes so much sense because she's a business major and a stats major, and it focuses a lot on stats and math and that side of engineering. So you're not the person necessarily making the products, but you're the person finding the most efficient way to like run a company or the most efficient way to run an assembly line. Um, so yeah, traffic lights, you know, lines at Disneyland, kind of those things that we kind of take for granted into like how they're put together are stuff that um, IOR majors do. Um, and in the top left hand corner, you can see an IOR student in action and the bottom, le um, bottom left hand corner, you can actually see a club fair where a lot of people get those opportunities to, you know, do some sort of internship or some, or some sort of research in IOR. Um, then we have next our material science and engineering major. It's housed in the most beautiful building in the college, in my opinion, um, in the Hearst Mining Building, which you can see on the picture on the right hand side. If you ever get to visit this building in person, it's absolutely beautiful. You walk in and it's just like, I think it was one of the first buildings that was built on campus and it's just absolutely beautiful. I love the architecture in there and recommend taking classes in that building. Um, but this major specifically focus on, focuses on desirable material properties, function, environmental impact, feasibility, and cost. So um, we'll talk about 
I think in the next slide, we'll talk about mechanical engineering, which focuses a lot on like the making of products and that sort of side. But they work very closely with material science and engineering students because these are the students that are going to look up what, you know, what plastic is going to work better for this product. Does it have to be flexible? Does it have to be super rigid? Um, you know, what there's a club on campus called the Concrete Canoe Team. And most of the students in this club are material science and engineering students. And they take concrete, which in my mind is something that's like super heavy, not really buoyant, and they make canoes out of it. And then they go to Lake Tahoe and they make these canoes and they all go inside of them and like ride them. And I'm like, how do you make like a canoe out of concrete? That doesn't make sense to me, but they find a way to do it and they just try to find the most effective properties of each kind of material and make products that way. So it's a really cool um, major that I didn't really know about before coming to Berkeley. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a good overview of it. Yeah, wow. Okay, the material science major all of a sudden sounds super cool. I didn't even consider it that much, but now I'm like, whoa, okay, this is definitely something I should look into. Uh, but now let me dive into the civil and environmental engineering major. So this is kind of a very unique major that really looks at kind of the intersection between civil engineering and how in natural environments. So this really wants to look at how can we make a lot of infrastructures and systems more sustainable. And so as you might know, like civil engineers are typically in charge of making a lot of and designing and building a lot of the things that we see, such as roadways, dams and bridges. But I think that at Cal with that whole added environmental um, aspect of the civil engineering major, you also get to look at another, other very interesting topics such as how can we create better, how, what are some solutions to, for example, safer air quality and drinking water and how can we better manage our waste that are coming from a lot of our infrastructures and as well as they also look at ways of how can we clean up contamination and hazardous waste in certain rivers and lakes as well. So I think some really cool stuff happening there. And then the mechanical engineering major that Christina also just mentioned. So they really are looking there. This major is very much more focused on science and math and more of the like practical, useful kind of, I don't know, mechanical thing of it. So basically they'll be in charge of uh, machine design and kind of testing a lot of materials to see if they'll withstand certain design requirements. So I know that for example, um, this is always a fun fact. So for example, pieces of the Golden Gate Bridge were actually stress tested in the civil, um, in like the civil engineering building, but I think mechanical engineers was, were also involved in that. And um, this major also looks at numerous other things such as um, energy and like robotics and also at like automated manufacturing and computer mechanics. Yeah, and one of the smallest, actually I think like second smallest departments we have within the college is our engineering science department. But within it, it has four majors, which are even tinier. Um, so it's a really, really nice community to join. And hopefully at least a couple of you got accepted. Usually there isn't too many of the students um, that are in this program, but it's really cool if they are. Um, the majors within this are energy, engine energy engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics, environmental engineering science. Um, so for example, we have civil and environmental engineering, but if you don't necessarily want to focus like on the architecture of building and that side of it, it's a really great pathway to go into environmental engineering science. Um, a lot of things that you can do within this department are focused more on the theoretical aspect of engineering rather than like the hands-on and applicable side. So a lot of students within this um, look towards internships, looks towards research, um, and you know, do grad school and do research on these topics. So if there's something, if this is one of the majors you admitted into, you should look into like research within these topics because it's really popular for students to do that. Especially we have um, a bunch of research opportunities within the College of Engineering. So there's always opportunities to get super involved. Um, so they focus on green technology, energy systems, sciences, math, bio, and physics. So you can really kind of take the major and make it your own, which is not necessarily something you could do with the rest of the majors. A lot of the curriculum is pretty strict, but with these majors, because they're so small, um, you're really able to make it your own and work with your advisor to just make sure you're able to take classes that apply for your major, but also take classes that actually interest you. Um, so in the photos, the middle picture, you can see one of the main engineering buildings on campus. Around campus this is kind of the main architecture that we have. Um, on the right hand side, the top picture, 
um, the lower floor is actually engineering student services where all the advisors are on campus. Then the bottom picture is Kresge Engineering Library, where a lot of engineers spend a lot of their time. Um, and hopefully next year they'll be open so you can go in there, rent a room or just like find a chair and a table and just study with friends or just like study alone and just like concentrate on midterms and finals and any projects you have coming up. Yeah, hopefully the libraries will be opening soon. I know that there's a few already who are uh, kind of running at reduced capacity. Uh, so hopefully Kresge will also open up soon. Uh, so the, another major, the most popular major in the College of Engineering is Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, which I'll refer to as EECS from now on. So basically this major really looks at more of the intersection between the um, kind of software and mechanical aspect of kind of creating a lot of systems and designs. So on the electrical engineering side, you'll typically be looking at how to generate or transmit electricity or even use electricity as a power source for a lot of the things that you will design. Uh, these, I know that some of my friends like designed some like semiconductors and also like I remember one of my roommates in EECS designed in her class in her freshman semester a self-driving mini car kind of thing where it would drive on command. So if she would say turn Turn, like, say turn right it would turn right kind of thing which I think is super awesome if you're doing that as a freshman and then kind of on the computer side so she had to actually build the vehicle but then as a computer science major she also had to design kind of the whole software behind that car and really I think this discipline really does combine really well both the software and hardware aspect of the major which I think is super unique um, and a lot of electrical engineers will typically go into the industry and do some amazing things like I have a friend who's a sophomore and going at Google this summer as an EECS major I think that's just there's so many opportunities with this major and as one of my fellow campus ambassadors always says this major is basically where you train computers to do your bidding and I think that it's honestly such a great way to describe the major. Yeah, I agree. I know a lot of people take that, um, even non electrical engineering students take that EE 16 series where they make these robots that like you can just tell to do something and they'll just do it. And it's like crazy. I don't understand it. And there are just so many things that electrical engineering students do. And I'm just like wowed by them. I could never do it. I only took one CS class and that was enough for me. But if you love it, I am I hope you got into the program or hope that even if you're not in EECS, you at least enjoy learning about CS and learning about coding and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, other opportunities beyond the 11 majors we just covered, um, you're able to do joint majors. So um, some of you might've applied to these. I think these are open in like the application cycle, but it's basically a pre-established double major. So for a lot of the other colleges that you'll get into, um, it'll be, you'll get into, for example, like Nina, you'll get into statistics as your main major. And then later on, you'll be like, oh, I want a double major in business as well. So then you'll kind of apply into business and kind of take prerequisite classes for that. But for joint majors, it's a program that you start off and you work your four years towards that. Um, it's also, you have your own advisor, I believe, for a joint major. So it's just really pre-established and makes sure that you can finish it in four years because even finishing one major within the College of Engineering is a lot to do, let alone two. So you have that support system and kind of that pathway that makes it easier um, to finish everything on time. We also have minors. So basically every single major we mentioned today has a, a minor attached to it. So, <clears throat> sorry, you can uh, like, again, minor in IOR, you can minor in EECS, you can minor, minor in bioengineering. One thing that we didn't mention is we actually have an aerospace engineering minor within the mechanical engineering department. So you can look into that. Um, and that's something you can pick up like once you're here at Berkeley, don't worry if you didn't like put it in your application cycle, like your advisors will work with you to make sure that if you want to pick up a minor, you're able to do that. We also have different certificates. There's the design innovation certificate that's really popular within the IOR community to take. It focuses a lot on math classes, entrepreneurship, business classes. There's also the entrepreneurship and technology um, certificate as well, which is more on the business side. Um, and then we have the MET program that some of you might might have been accepted into. And the MET program specifically is a joint program between the College of Engineering and the Haas School of Business. So you're able to go your four years and being in both of these super prestigious colleges. So for example, you could be a bioengineering student um, full time and also be a business student and graduate with a degree from both colleges. Um, and yeah, now 
regularly this is only open to students applying like their senior year in high school but now you're able to apply the fall of your sophomore year as well so even if it's something like you got into the college of engineering but you're like oh i didn't think about met but it sounds interesting you're able to apply the fall of your sophomore year um, and get in that way if you want to do that yeah that's a great kind of new addition. I think that in the past, they might have added that because a lot of college of engineering majors were applying to Haas in the regular kind of cycle um, and basically had a fake MET major kind of thing, which was really cool still. So, but, you know, we didn't cover all of the engineering majors. And really quickly, I'm a poll should be popping up asking you guys what engineering major you were admitted to. We're super curious. Uh, so please fill that out. But in the meantime, I'll be covering a little bit more about our, our school of chemistry and our chemical engineering um, kind of branch within that. So there's about a thousand students in the College of Engineering. So this is one of our smallest colleges on campus, but it is ranked number one globally. So if you're interested in chemistry or anything related to chemical engineering, for example, this is the place to be. It offers three majors, chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering, which I'll be talking a little bit more about. So basically the chemical engineering major is going to be testing and kind of mixing a lot of chemicals and oh sorry the pole just keeps popping up but um they'll be looking at different compounds and really trying to make chemical processes more efficient so for example they'll be looking at which catalysts are best for this certain process and how can we use this solution to make that process more effective so they're really trying to research a lot more about how they can make things a lot more efficient and also I think that this major, the chemical engineering major specifically, really prepares you for a lot of employment and industry. Um, in like a lot of chemical engineers will go into either like electrochemical, biochemical, they'll be going into food processing, aerospace, or even environmental control industries. Um, and others will go into more academia as well and get a further like a master's. But I think that one main reason why our College of, Engin of Chemistry, sorry, is so is ranked so highly globally is because we have made some insane discoveries here. We have discovered about 16 elements on of the periodic table, which is about 10% of the periodic table. Um, some famous kind of elements are beculium, californium, seaborgium, or even plutonium. And also, if you've taken any high school chemistry class, you'll probably be familiar with the Lewis dot structure. Well, that was actually invented here at Berkeley, uh, a professor in the introductory chemistry class wanted to you know make it easier for his students to understand the relationship between neutrons protons and electrons and so he kind of devised the lewis dot structure and that's kind of stuck around to a lot of different institutions as well which is pretty cool uh, on the poll here i see that we have a lot of electrical engineering majors which is not surprising we have bioengineering we have a really good range of majors here wow uh, well congratulations to you and hopefully see you at berkeley in the fall Yeah, we're hoping we see all of you in Berkeley and we hope that we see all of you in these introductory classes that you'll see on the pictures on your screen. So I want to talk a little bit about classes because college is really different than I mean, some classes are similar, but a lot of the classes that you'll take in the College of Engineering are going to be super different from what you took in high school. Um, so the way that we divide our classes and the most popular mode of instruction for classes within the College of Engineering is lecture, section, and then lab. So let's take, for example, an introductory chemistry course. I know we have a couple students that um, are were accepted into the chemical engineering department. So um, the introductory chemistry class for chemical engineering students is going to be Chem 3A. So for Chem 3A, you're going to have a lecture that's going to be three times a week, um, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one hour each day. Um, then you'll have a section that'll be um, with a graduate student instructor. There's students at UC Berkeley, a lot of them are grad students within the College of Chemistry. So they've already gone through these classes and they already know a lot of the content. Um, and a lot of them wanna go into academia. So it's kind of their first practice at teaching students. Um, so these students will teach a section, which is usually once a week, one hour a week. So let's say four hours in total. And then you'll have your lab section. So your lab section for these introductory chemistry courses is usually gonna be maybe about three hours long. Um, and in that lab course, you'll also have a graduate student instructor um, be in the lab with you and kind of teach you um, what you learned in class, but put a hands-on approach on it. And that's a lot of the classes within the College of Chemistry and within the College of Engineering. We try to make it as hands-on as possible just because of the subject matter. Um, and then for all of these, the 
professor you have, the section GSI and the lab GSI, you have office hours that you got to go to. Um, so you're able to go, they usually put up um, a schedule, hey, I'm available these times, these times, and these times, and you're able to go in, talk to them about any questions you have, and overall just like talk to them as people and get to know them. It's a great way to just like build relationship with professors, especially if you need a letter of rec later on, if you want to like get a research position, anything like that, it's always great to have references to look back on. Um, in terms of class size, it's going to be dependent on major. I know most of the students filled out the poll and said they were EECS majors. EECS majors are going to have slightly larger classes just because there's so many EECS students on campus. And also the subject matter just lends itself to be like better for large classroom sizes. So for example, like a material science engineering student, it's going to be hard to have like a 500 person lecture on what they're studying because they have to do a lot of lab courses and actually get hands on practice. But um, for students in EECS, it might be a little easier because uh, you do everything on your laptop. But even if if you have a class size that's let's say 500 students, you're going to have that section class that's going to be about you know 25 to 30 students that's going to kind of even out the playing field. Um, and in these large lecture classes, we have eye clickers and in class interaction to make sure it doesn't feel overwhelming to have one professor to so many students. The professor will walk around, make sure that every anyone that has questions is getting them answered. They'll put questions on the board and be like, OK, work with the people around you to find an answer to the question. Um, so they try their best to get to, to get people to collaborate together. And also, that's a great way to form study groups. And a couple of resources that we have for students um, in terms of the academics, we have the Student Learning Center, which is a tutoring center on campus open to every undergrad and graduate student. We have the Engineering, engineering Student Services, with, which specifically offers tutoring for engineering specific classes. So I've gone in there a lot because a lot of the time the Student Learning Center is great for the introduc introductory coursework. But once you get into upper division classes, it's a lot better to go to a student who's taken those classes and knows a lot more about it. And then lastly, we have four year academic advisors within the college. So there's like one main advisor for the College of Engineering overall. And then our main advisor is split up by major. So for example, when I came in, I had my advisor that focused on undeclared engineering and focused on just getting me to decide what I wanted to do. And then I transferred over to another advisor that is specifically for industrial engineering and operations research students. So you spend four years with them and you really get to know them and just like talk to them and they're there to help you and really be a resource to you in any way they can. Yeah, I've heard that the engineering advisors are one of the best in Berkeley as a whole. Uh, now kind of shifting gears, I'll be talking a little bit more about student life. So we have a, little, a lot of student diversity opportunities here at campus. So one that I always like to touch on is the Women in Science and Engineering theme program. There should also be a poll popping up asking you where you're joining us from. So please fill that out. But back to the theme program. So basically, this is a theme program in the dorms where you'll get to house with other people who are like minded. So in this case, this will be women in science and in STEM. I remember having a friend who was in this program and she absolutely loved it because everybody around her was taking similar classes, was going through similar kind of problems. And so she could just go to her neighbor, knock on their door and ask for help for her math homework, for example. So if that is something you're interested in, highly recommend uh, applying through the housing application. We also have Black, the Black Engineering and Science Student Association, also known as BESA, as well as the Hispanic Engineers and Scientists, also known as HES. Um, and then another thing I'd like to touch upon is the EOP STEM program, which was basically created to bring um, underrepresented students, students in science, technology, and engineering, and kind of more mathematics field um, by providing them more one-on-one -on -one support through mentorship, as well as guidance and um, opportunities for them to explore what the major, what their kind of the College of Engineering has to offer and also helping them um, gain exposure into potential industry jobs and other things like that. And then we also have the prep engineering program. I saw that there was a question in the Q&A about this. So this is kind of prep stands for the pre-engineering program. Um, it's a three-week program that begins in the summer and that is offered to incoming Berkeley engineering students. So most of you guys, for example. And so prep kind of will also continue throughout the year and will host regular workshops and events. And I know that a lot of people who are in these prep cohorts are very, very tight and will always kind of stay together as well. Yeah, I know a lot of people who started out in prep and just like got that experience of meeting other first year engineering students and like looking back, I wish I would have done it because I think it's just like a 
six week program, you get to know the campus a little better before starting classes and you get to just make friends. So it's a great opportunity in case you want to apply, I highly recommend it. Um, and I talked a little bit about clubs and competitions within the College of Engineering, but wanted to dive deep into it. So uh, first of all, these are a list of some of our most popular club and competition teams. We have Cal Soul, um, which is it? Cal Soul is in the bottom, bottom left-hand corner, the Cal Steel Bridge team, bottom right-hand corner, um, Berkeley Formula Racing, which is not pictured on the screen, Biomedical Engineering Society, Society of Women Engineers, which I've been involved in, Cal Hacks, Pioneers in Engineering, Department Honor Societies. I talked uh, before about Concrete Canoe Club, and you can see a picture of them in the top left-hand corner. Um, we also have our Aerospace Club on campus, SAE, which is um, pictured in the top right corner. So overall, a lot of the clubs on campus in, and within the College of Engineering are just an opportunity for you to increase your academics, but also get a community aspect out of it. So a lot of these students, you know, work a whole semester, work a whole year on these projects, and they're getting actual, like, they're learning a lot about the subject matter, and they're learning a lot about their major and how they can apply it, and they use this on resume, but also they're making friends throughout the process, and they're building a community of like-minded individuals within the College of Engineering or within other colleges, but overall, um, like, interested in STEM. So I highly recommend getting involved in a club or competition team. There's also department honor societies if you want to do that. Um, I'm not sure what the GPA requirements are for each major, but I know each major has a Department Honor Society. In case you have the GPA that meets it, they'll host a lot of study groups. They'll just like be an additional resource to all students. Yeah, thank you. And now I'll be quickly covering some labs and maker spaces. So the first one is the Saturja Dai Hall, which is home to Citrus, which is known as the Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society, but we're just going to call it Citrus for short. Uh, so this is basically a research center that really focuses on how can we use technology to, to solve some of the biggest social and economic problems in the world. So I believe that currently they're doing a lot of research into health related projects, and they're also doing a lot of investigations in how we can use robots to build sustainable infrastructures. And you can actually get a lot of research positions through this um, kind of program so highly recommend um then we also have jacobs hall which is home to the jacobs institute for design and design innovation so this is kind of a berkeley hub for learning and really a lot of hands-on experiences so they'll also provide courses um as well as the same in hesse hall i think most of these lab and maker spaces actually offer um courses for you to take and you can learn a lot of different things i remember my roommate in freshman year took this 3d printing workshop and it was so cool i remember she would come home on my birthday she like 3d printed this like or not my birthday, I think it was like Christmas or something, but she 3D printed this like cake layer that said like Merry Christmas, Nina. And it was super cute. Um, and like, I think that like uh, Jacobs Hall and both Hesse Hall really allow you to do that independent tinkering that engineers really love to do. I know that my roommate would spend hours in these labs at maker spaces, um, especially Hesse Hall, which is the mechanical engineering machine shop. And so this is basically a space which provides a lot of engineering students with machinery and equipment as well as a safe working environment because there will be a lot of professors and kind of helping um, staff walking around helping you using the machines if you're unfamiliar with a lot of these things they'll be there to help you. Um, I know that Hesse Hall also sometimes sponsors certain competitions and you can um, usually they'll like pay you to do some of these things I know that uh, the Cal Steel Bridge team is sponsored um, and so a lot of things like that as well. And then we also have Davis Hall, which is uh, for the kind of home to the Civil Engineering Construction Bay, which is really cool. As I mentioned before, the Golden Gate Bridge was actually stress tested in this building. Um, and the Cal Steel Bridge team also uses this space for a lot of their different projects. And then finally, we have the Richmond Field Station, which is um, a kind of further away from campus, but it's just a bus route away. Um, and it is mainly used by the College of Engineering, but is also used by other staff um, in other colleges. But this is where a lot of clubs and research will take place. So I know that, for example, Cal Soul and the Berkeley, Berkeley Formula Racing Team practice on the Richmond Fields. Yeah, that's a good note that Nina said that we have a lot 
what overall the whole university does, but specifically the College of Engineering has a lot of funding. So yeah, a lot of these things and a lot of these clubs are highly funded. So for example, myself through Hispanics and Engineering and Science have been able to go on conferences and get like everything comped from like the airfare to like my hotel to the, like the research I'm presenting there. And that's another thing. There's a lot of research within the College of Engineering. So first we have um, a program that's open to every single UC Berkeley student, and that's the undergraduate research apprenticeship program or otherwise known as UREP. It's a super popular major. It's a super popular program because you really don't have to have any experience in research before this. You can apply as early as, you know, your freshman year at UC Berkeley and you're able to work under a professor, work under a GSI or some sort of department and do research alongside these people. So it's, I think, talking to my friends at other universities, a lot of the time they're like, how do you do research? How do you do all of this? And I'm just like, there's just a bunch of resources at my school. And that's something to take into account, like when choosing a college, just like how much they're going to give back to you. And I think Berkeley does a really good job at doing that, especially in terms of research. Um, Beehive is another program. It's basically just like a website that's open to College of Engineering students at Berkeley. And I think any any student overall that wants to set up an account and is uh, like currently studying at a university and you're able to just look up a lot of opportunities for internships, research, job search after graduating, et cetera. Um, we have the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab up in the Berkeley Hills. Um, it's really rare to find a university that has a national lab attached to it. And we actually work pretty closely with the national lab and a lot of our students after graduating go and work there. Uh, one of my friends was an astrophysics major while here at UC Berkeley. Then he went on and is still currently working at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So it's pretty cool that you're able to like stay in Berkeley and continue studying because there's just so many opportunities around you. We have the Sutarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. Um, and there's actually, I've taken one IOR class in this building. It's a beautiful building, super, super new. Um, inside of this, we hold the Collider Cup, which is basically it's like a competition where students are able to like um, show off the different projects they've worked on, different kind of startup ideas that they have and kind of compete against each other. And it's really cool because these are like actual ideas that you can actually present to a company one day, because if you win first place, it just kind of shows the dedication that you put into it. And there's also a bunch of undergrad and professional programs slash research that you can look into. I also want to give a big congratulations to a congratulation to our newest uh, Nobel Prize winners. So we have Jennifer Doudna, who won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry uh, for her cutting edge research with CRISPR. And then we have Reinhard Genzel, who won the 2020 Nobel, Nobel Prize for Physics um, with his kind of research into black holes. And then finally, I'll hand it off to Christina for some legacy. Yeah, thank you, Nina. And yeah. Just wanted to end off with a few notable figures within the College of Engineering. We have Ruth Goldberg, which was an engineer, cartoonist, and complex machine maker. And a lot of you might have done in middle or high school, kind of like these Ruth Goldberg machines where you try to do like a simple task but have all these steps leading up to it. And they're really cool to make. It's kind of like anticlimactic because it's just like this super simple thing. Like, I don't know, like tossing the ball somewhere and you have to set up this whole thing for it. But he's the one who originally came up with this concept. Our current Dean of the university is Dean Liu. Uh, she was an instructor here, researcher here an administrator and is now the first female Dean of the college, something we're super proud of, especially as we celebrate 150 years of women on our campus. Shafi Goldwasser, which won the Turing Prize, which is for you, for a lot of the like EEC students or CS students that are interested in that field, it's basically the equivalent of a Nobel Prize for CS, since there's not necessarily a Nobel Prize in that field. Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, I'm using like a MacBook right now, I have an iPhone, so a lot of Berkeley kind of alumni products in my household. And then lastly, um, 150 years ago, we admitted women onto our campus, but one of the most notable things is some of the most popular majors that these first women on campus got involved in were engineering in the STEM field. So it's really cool to 150 years later kind of be going through that legacy and continuing that. Oh, sorry, my mic was muted. Congratulations, Nina and Christina, for a wonderful, wonderful tour. I learned a lot. I hope you all did as well. 
Now we just get to move into a little bit of question and answering. So our first question is for you, Christina. We had an anonymous student ask, um, hi, I've been waitlisted at the IEOR program. Uh, I was just hoping to know a little bit more about your experience with the program. Essentially, they're just asking, uh, does this engineering program give an international perspective, particularly with developing countries? And does it give you specific experience with real life problems? Yeah, so I'll kind of take it in parts. Um, I really, really hope you get off the wait list because it's an amazing program and an amazing department to be in. Um, and overall, I think um, as you get into those upper division classes, there is an opportunity to actually get, um, I'm starting to forget the question, sorry, but get like that actual like hands on experience and get kind of the different scenarios with it. So especially if you want to like look into international studies and doing this at a larger scale, like I, for example, um, I'm fluent in Spanish and so is Nina. We actually give the Spanish tours for campus ambassadors. Um, and one thing I've always thought about was like, oh, there's not a lot of engineer like female engineering majors in a lot of like Spanish speaking countries. That would be cool to one day travel and work for a company abroad. So um, within your classes, a lot of the College of Engineering is doing projects. So for example, one of my IOR classes, what I had to do is um, kind of focus, focus more on the architecture side, but I had to basically plan to set up a shopping center in this city. And I had to look at the traffic patterns. I had to look at the different aspects that would either be a good idea to put the shopping center there, it'd be a bad idea, and look at what roads I had to move, where the on-ramp would be, where the off-ramp would be. So you're able to get like that experience. And like, if you really wanted to, and you know you wanna do international, what you could do is talk to your professor and be like, hey, am I able to like do this in a different landscape? Like, I don't wanna do a city in the US. I wanna do a rural area in like Colombia, for example, and use that as like, kind of like the background of it. So I'd say it's a good opportunity. There's, I don't think there's a specific class in the IOR, de IOR department that focuses on it, but there's a bunch of projects you do where you're able to apply those kind of like things in the back of your head that you wanna study after graduating, you can apply them into your projects and into your group work. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I answered all the question, but I think I did. Yeah, that was great. I definitely agree with Christina. Like if you are interested in something, not one particular class may give it to you, but you have the opportunity to apply whatever you care about to a lot of different projects. I mean, that's one of the really cool things about college is that the projects are super open-ended. So our next question goes to you, Nina. Um, can you talk about your experience picking out your first semester classes? And do you have any advice for incoming students? I know I was super confused my first semester. Yes, I... Yeah, I remember in the summer when I was like waiting for they're like giving me my time. I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, at the time, I was also like a different major, but I I literally like I didn't know what to do. Uh, so it was super scary. So I actually reached out to a Berkeley student from my high school who is a sophomore, and I asked her like, "Hey, like, what am I supposed to be doing?" And so I think that like the way I went about it, but everybody will have a different kind of approach to it, is that my first semester, I actually wanted to explore a lot more about Berkeley. But at the same time, I was doing kind of the more general prerequisites because at the time I wasn't super sure about my major yet. Um, so I did a lot of like, I took math courses in my first semester because almost every single major that I was interested in had to do some sort of math. So I was like, okay, might as well start off with the math series in my fr uh, first semester. And then I also took a bunch of breadth classes. So I actually had like, two technical classes and then two breath classes. Um, the breath classes were so fun. I think it was definitely the best way to start off my freshman year. I took this like um, landscape architecture class in the College of Environmental Design. And we got to like, there's strawberry. So we have this creek called Strawberry Creek that runs through our campus. And it's also kind of coined as being like a living laboratory. And so we got to walk in the creek and we like measured stream flow. We also measured like stream health and we found some like we like analyzed a lot of like microinvertebrates, which like not into insects, you know, we got to like <laughs> dissect a lot of them and like look at that. Um, and then I also took an environmental econ class in the Rouser College of Natural Resources, which was super cool. Um, the professor was like very involved in a lot of those like up and coming models that were kind of being designed in um, that like environmental economics major. So we learned a lot about fisheries. And honestly, I think my first semester was just such a great like introduction to all the things that Berkeley had to offer because I was literally taking four classes in four different colleges here at Berkeley and it really gave me like a very good sense of what to expect so I think that that's my recommendation for like picking out your classes just like 
maybe do general technical classes, but also just have fun with it and really try to take some niche classes and random things as well. Yeah, that was incredible advice. I wouldn't have said it any differently. Um, I definitely think it's helpful to have any student that you know that's in college help you out, especially with some of the logistics of it. You will have some form of virtual orientation to help you figure out some of the logistics, so don't worry about that. But you know, talk to your friends, talk to anyone you know who's already in college, um, or talk to us if you don't have anyone. Um, but we're more than happy to help out. Getting other people's perspective is really important, and finding your own way is really, really cool as well. So now we're gonna wrap up with our last question of the day that I'm actually gonna ask both Christina and Nina. So we'll start with you, Christina. What is your Berkeley story? Why Berkeley, uh, especially if you're engineering? Yeah, so I didn't, had never been to Berkeley, didn't know too much about it, just knew like when I, like I did like the typical high school thing. Oh, I wanna major in engineering. Googled top engineering schools in US, top engineering schools in California, that kind of thing. And I stumbled upon UC Berkeley and didn't know they had such like a good engineering program. I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me like put this down as like one of my dream schools. Like this would be really cool to go to. Um, so I applied to it, didn't think much of it. And then come March, I found out I got into UC Berkeley. And like many of you, I saw the confetti on the email and I was super, super excited. And, like I was just like, overfilled with joy. And then I was like, okay, I actually have to go visit the school because I think I'll really like it. So I came on a day called Cal Day. And this year we'll still have a Cal Day. We'll actually have a whole week lineup of events. So highly encourage each and every one of you to visit all of our online offerings. Um, but I came to Cal Day in person and it was just a great experience for me. Um, I got here like at 8 a.m. I got to like eat breakfast in the College of Engineering. I got to like meet some college advisors. I got to sit in on lectures, get a College of Engineering tour, get merch. It was just like like going to Disneyland, but like for a college. It was just like the best experience ever. And uh, kind of like Disneyland, there was a bunch of student performances. I got to hear a bunch of really cool acapella groups and I was like, oh my God, this is like pitch perfect, this is great. And I got to he hear Cal Band and I got to watch Noon Rally with all of Cal Spirit. And that just kind of really turned it for me. I was like, this is like, like what I see in movies in terms of college experience and college experience. And also aside from that, like the academics and the lectures I sat in on, like the professors were just, wanting to talk to prospective students I was like why do you want to talk to me like I'm just like a nobody like why do you want to talk to me but they were just like so involved and they were they were the best and the students here are the best so that day kind of made me want to go into the College of Engineering but overall just go into Berkeley as a whole and I've loved every every minute of the three years I've been here um, and I'm sure Nina has also loved it and can tell you a little bit about her story. No, yeah, I completely agree. Looking back on kind of high school and applying to colleges, I realized that out of everywhere I applied to, I would never have been as happy as I am here. Like it's, it's so surreal looking back. Um, but yeah, let me kind of like talk you through kind of my story. So I'm an international student, so I never really had the opportunity to be coming to campus. And so for me, if you knew me back in high school, I was the most indecisive person you'll ever meet. So trying to make that decision of where to go to college with basically no knowledge was just super difficult. Um, and so I went to my counselor and she gave me a piece of advice and she said, for one day, pretend like you're going, oh, cause okay, came down to two universities at the end. And so she was like, for one day, pretend like you're going to the other university and for another day, pretend like you're going to Berkeley. So I was like, I was super ready for this. Like I was doing the whole Google drop thing. I was walking down the streets. I was looking at buildings. And now with Berkeley, it's made a lot easier with our new U visit that you should go check out. So perfect for international students, I would say. Um, and so I was, you know, doing all of that. I was looking on Instagram of like, what clubs would I be joining? What was it like being a Berkeley student? And I really, really was trying to pretend like I accepted the offer. And like, how did I feel at the end of the day? And going back and like, I went back to my counselor and I told her without a doubt, I see myself accomplishing so many different things at Berkeley. I could see myself pursuing econ. I could see myself pursuing business and I could just see myself learning languages as well. Like I love learning languages. And on top of being a double major, I've been able to, able to study German here, um, which highly recommend the whole language department in Berkeley. Um, I've been able to do graphic design. I've been introduced to a love for statistics that I didn't know I had. And so I think that that's what honestly I love about Berkeley is that it'll introduce you to a lot of things you never even expected you enjoyed. And 
it just becomes contagious after a while. Like there's so many things at Berkeley that sound cool and sound fun. They'll just make you want to learn more and do more things. And I think that I really needed that push or that university that would make me so passionate about the things that I'm doing. And I think that Berkeley was just the perfect place for me to do that and just like really explore everything that um, even just the greater California Bay Area had to offer because I think that Berkeley truly offers you all of the resources but it is kind of up to you to go for it and look for all those resources because once you find them there will be so many people there waiting to help you as well and a lot of upperclassmen will so down to help you so dang that excitement from you Nina I could just feel a lot it was palpable like honestly agree so much with everything y'all are saying I really think one of the cool things about college in general is that you know you can just do whatever you want to do and like you can find stuff that interests you like let yourself do that so thank you all so much for joining our virtual tour today um, if you want to learn more we have so many other resources for you if you want to check out the engineering website for admitted students here it is right there follow us on social media and get to know our ambassadors a little better at visit uc berkeley uh, also if you're interested in registering for a more general campus virtual visit check out uh, caladmit.com we do have other recorded visits, as we mentioned previously, and student panels. I highly recommend you check them out. Our ambassadors are fantastic. They've got so much wonderful stuff to say. I cannot tell you how much I love hearing them talk. Um, next, we also have our Bear Talk blog. This kind of gives you a little bit more of a written perspective. Students get to talk about stories that are interesting to them, talk about you know, what their experience being a student is like. Um, I know I'm writing one that's going to be released pretty soon, so I'm pretty excited. Check it out. Um, shameless self-plug in there. Um, also, we do have our use visit tour, as Nina mentioned. Check it out. It's a really cool opportunity, especially if you can't make it up to campus. And we do have the ability for you to visit campus. Um, we, If you want to do like a self-guided walking tour, that is a possibility. If you're in the area and travel restrictions allow and you can be safe, please do so. Lastly, I do want to mention that if you are you know, sharing anything about your Berkeley experience, your Berkeley story as you're going through this crazy college choosing process, tag us, uh, use the hashtag I am Berkeley and we'll maybe share it on some of our pages. Um, yeah, thank you all so much. Um, oh my God, sorry, technology is <laughs> just like that. Um, got too excited. So thank you all so much for joining us here today. Um, uh, UC Berkeley, our virtual visit an engineering admitted tour. Thank you to Christina and Nina. Thank you to everyone who decided to spend this hour with us. We really do appreciate you choosing to spend that time with us. It's an honor, it's a privilege, we're so lucky. Um, and we're gonna end this tour how we end everything at Berkeley. I think Christina and Nina, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll give you the opportunity to unmute. One, two, three, go, go, bears. go Bears. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.